Thank you for this opportunity. I am Joel Boda. This is Gabriel Samo. We are directed together the, the BAD project Pioneer. We are both project scientists. I am more into uh, public policy studies. Gabriel is, is more into project communication. And we both work at the uh, Hungarian Research Network Center for Social Sciences. This is a research unit, so that the university are not teaching like Max Planck in, in Germany or CN, uh, CNMS in France. So this is just exclusive about research. So very quickly, uh, uh, our consortium, we are leading the consortium. The members are Adam Mickiewicz University from Poland, Petrusholand University, the Psychological uh, Institute uh, from Hungary, European University Institute, where the Claudio Oradelli is working on policy, uh, part of European University of Viadina, uh, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, where we have um, Alan Halperin, a, a social psychologist, University of Florent, with Nicola Ube, um, more into political communication. Gaming Society, which is a company who is working on this metaverse issue, as we all know in the poll, we had this, uh, <laughs> this issue of metaverse, <laughs> and we, we found a good partner for that. And we have European Citizens Action Net, uh, Service, which is an NGO based in Brussels, who will help us with the policy impact and everything. So, uh, uh, very shortly about the basic concepts, the, the, the project builds on two uh, key concepts moral emotions and moralized political identity. Moral emotions, as I suppose most of you know, uh, generally defined as, as emotions that are linked to the interest or welfare either of society as a whole or at least of persons, or groups, other than the judge or agent. This is, this is the definition given by Jonathan Haidt. And he, he, uh, he gives two criteria to, to evaluate whether an emotion really qualifies as a, as a, as a moral emotion. Uh, if uh, the elicitors are disinterested on one hand, so more the elicitors are disinterested because, of course, it's not totally disinterested. If, if it's totally disinterested, I probably don't feel an emotion, so it's not totally disinterested, but still, it's, it's, it's different than myself who is feeling the emotion, and more an emotion triggers pro social action tendencies, then we can say that it's, it's, it's kind of more emotion. And many emotions are qualified or can qualify as moral emotions, of course like anger, pride, resentment, contact, etc. Uh, of course, they, they, may, they may work as a, as a, as a basic uh, emotion, like anger, obviously, if you step on my foot, I will, I will be angry, but it's not a moral emotion, but if I am, uh, I am, I am angry at the government, uh, that Viktor Orban is destroying the future of Hungary, then this, is a, this, is a, this, will, uh, this anger will qualify as a moral emotion. And of course, moral emotions are inextricably linked to identities, in our case, political identities and moralized political identities. Uh, I would even say that, that maybe this moralized political identity is, is the par excellence political identity. If we have if we a political identity, usually it's because we believe that it's good for society. I am green because I believe that sustainability is an important issue, or I, I am liberal, whatever. So, so this is a kind of assumption or starting point that moralized political identities are important. And, and Although it seems to me that this is quite evident that moral emotions are important in politics, or moralized political identity is important in politics, actually neither political science nor political psychology haven't really uh, uh, worked with these concepts. I wouldn't say that not at all, of course, but uh, I was really surprised when the, the, the Oxford Handbook of Political Psychology edited 10 years ago has two paragraphs of moral emotions, two paragraphs in the whole book. The, the Cambridge Handbook, which was edited uh, and, and published two years ago, has at least one page on moral emotions. Uh, that's it. Uh, and the same in political science. In political science, we use political identity in, in mostly a descriptive way, you know, whether you are left, right, whatever. But the idea that, that the political identity is a moralized one, I think, is not taken into account. And I think it's important because it, it has implications. What kind of questions do we ask about the, moral, uh, the, the political agent? The, political, the motives behind political action, political behavior, etc. So, so I think that these are these are uh, my in, in important concepts, and of course we will, we would like to work also on the theoretical conceptual implications of, of these ideas. And and the, the thread which which goes through the whole project uh, focuses on the unifying and divisive potential of, of moral emotions. Now the main pillars of the work plan are. Uh, context and foundation, okay. We have a work package which deals mostly uh, <coughs> how and what kind of uh, moral emotions are triggered by politics, like political campaigns. Nobody will tell uh, a little bit more about that. So this is the work package on that. Another work package 
focuses on the relationship between moral emotions and moral life political identity. That's why I also asked the question to, to you, Mika and, and, and Teresa. And here as well we put this kind of relationship, although of course this is this is more complicated. Moral emotions uh, presupp presupposes some presupposes some kind of identities, of course, because I am, as I said, the disinterested elicitor cannot be totally disinterested, so I am, I am I must identify somehow with the homeless or the Hungarians or or whatever group that I feel uh, uh, some kind of moral emotion about. Uh, and the last word package uh, looks at the other way around. So how moral emotions slash moralized political identities lead to some kind of political choices or even macro level political uh, consequences. The whole project uh, 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 employs, I would say, a horizontally wide approach, meaning that, that instead of focusing on one question, of, we have the basic concept of moral emotions, but we, let, we, we look at different issues and we try to map the different um, uh, implications or consequences of, of this kind of approach. So that's why uh, in the following I will very uh, fast uh, skim through our, our, our tasks so that you see that, that how many topics and the issues are, are there in the, in the work program. Of course, we would like to make conceptual, empirical, and methodological contributions, not to mention impact and communication, which is very important. Uh, and I, I, I won't enter the, the details here, but we <coughs> use many, methodology, many, many methodologies, including text mining, so big data analysis, surveys, experimental surveys, experiments, qualitative content analysis, uh, interviews, etc. So, of course, throughout those many tasks that, as I said, are really, I will flesh out for you, uh, there will be a lot of methodologies used. Now, uh, as I said, just very quickly, uh, the first work package is about context and foundations. We have a task on this conceptual theoretical issues that I, I just raised. So this is a task which, 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 which will accompany the whole project uh, to, to the end. Uh, we have a, a task uh, which is a kind of descriptive uh, endeavor to look at political discourses and, and look at in a longitudinal analysis whether it's more emotional or not. Again, Gabriel will tell a little bit more about that. We have a task which looks at war emotions and journalism, political journalism. So, uh, what kind of challenge does the, the use of moral emotions in politics uh, pose to, 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 to journalists? And we also have a task which looks at uh, popular culture, namely television series, and what kind of moral emotions are implied in those television series. Now, we have this work package where, as I said, we look at how politics triggering moral emotions and what kind of moral emotions. We have a uh, a task which looks at uh, political campaigns, namely the, the, the European campaign this uh, spring. Again, Gabriela will uh, <laughs> tell a little bit, a few words about that. A little bit. So. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. We are, uh, sorry, I will, be, I will be talking a little bit more than her. We try to be uh, uh, as short as possible. We have a task on illiberal politics and emotions. It's actually a very important issue in Hungary and also in Poland, but in other countries as well, there are either politics and what kind of emotions uh, does this uh, elicit in people. Uh, how does emotional regulation modify the moral emotional effect of politics? Uh, this is Aran and, and his team who will mostly work, work about this. And, uh, and uh, a task about uh, policies, so what kind of moral emotions are mobilized by different policy fields? Here actually we will use a, a survey, um, survey experiment, but also uh, cloud we use the narrative policy framework because he's very much into that. So we will look at we will look at that. And the metaverse is what is what is the effect of metaverses on politics related moral emotions. So so we will try to design experiments in this metaverse setting. So how people behavior when it's not them but the avatars who are, who are making uh, choices or, or behaving in the context. So this is the first work package. The second which looks at uh, the relationship between emotions and, and identities. Uh, here we have a task on how do moral emotions influence political identity formation. We will look at a few cases. I think the, the case of European uh, identities will be one of, one of those cases. Uh, Eran, again, we look at the role of moral emotions in intergroup conflicts. In Israel, is, 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 is a very important issue, but we look at other cases as well. And we have a task which looks at effective polarization. So we, try to, we will try to contribute to, to this uh, 
burgeoning literature and using moral emotions and how can we maybe conceptualize affective polarization through moral emotions and maybe measure it, you know, measuring affective polarization, especially in European setting, the multi-party system is not at all evident. So I think that there are both conceptual and methodological challenges in this sense. And then we have uh, uh, this work package where uh, uh, we look at, at mostly from the other angle, so what emotions and identities uh, like like cause in terms of political behavior or even macro level political effects. So there will be again a task on policy. Here we will look uh, we will look at policy change and policy support. So the previous task was more about agenda setting here, policy change, decision and, and policy support as I mentioned in some the implementation part of the of the policy cycle with uh, the policy process will also be somehow covered. Uh, uh, we have a task on the role of moral emotions in information processing. This is an old question in political psychology. And, and then we have a task which tries to, to uh, examine uh, the, the macro level effects on democratic quality of affective polarization. There are more and more studies on this, but I think the mechanisms are, are not quite clear, so we will try to contribute to this as well. And we have a task on uh, civic activism, and of course, climate activism and the Ukrainian war, which we all mentioned actually in the call, we will also look at them, so, so this is obviously again a, an issue which is overlapping, I think, with the projects and it's great to some, some um, synergies. Uh, impact, uh, I just listed here a few things, of course we have a, a lot of ideas, uh, including uh, measuring policy balance and maybe uh, developing a tool, you know, for policy makers, how to measure emotional balance of policies. Policy proposals, uh, of course, uh, we will develop policy training and educational materials and also we will hold uh, trainings. Also game-based tools, kind of educational materials to increase emotional resilience and how to you know, face uh, the emotional uh, manipulation, so to speak, uh, of, 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 of politics uh, by citizens. And of course, we will do advocacy and policy workshops in Brussels. Uh, these are important because as I, I will, I will uh, uh, let me uh, 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 seize the floor to, to Gabriella. Uh, this is one, I think it's one, one way to, to cooperate between the projects. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and we will also, we plan to do some summer academies on moral emotions for uh, NGO, uh, activists, uh, journalists, or, or whoever are interested. Um, we may also join forces. Okay, Gabriela. All right, thank you. So, hello, I'm, I'm Gabriela Sebo, Center for Social Sciences, Budapest, Hungary, and uh, I'm representing the, the Morris Project, but I'm also a proud member of the Pledge Project as well, so collaboration and synergies are very dear to me, so that's the reason I would like to focus a little bit more on the, the possible ways of, of cooperation and less about the substantive part of the project. I hope that you don't mind that, but if you are interested in more details about the actual content of the, the project and the work packages, then feel free to just approach me and, and, and I'm very much open for, for the discussion. But uh, the title of that workshop is Synergy Even, so that's the reason I would like to shift your focus a little bit about how we can possibly cooperate because this is what we are expected to do um, the, the European Commission really pushes us to, to do that so here are some just here are just ideas suggestions so this is what's in my mind in our mind so let's let's discuss it maybe not now maybe a little bit later on but anyway so these are just just suggestions and, and recommendations so, so take it as it is now. I think that one of the, the, the easiest way to collaborate is to, to merge our forces in, in joint events, right? So this is not crazy difficult how, how to do this. Uh, maybe we can participate in, in each other's conferences and workshops. Let's put some call for proposals together for sections and panel. I think that uh, we have uh, quite experienced scholars to do that. So if you're interested in, in such things, like. I, I see many, many, um, many linked issues, like resentment, for example, or, or guilt and blame and stuff like that. So I foresee a very nice section and, and proposals in the next uh, couple of, of years. Because the project starts and finish uh, uh, pretty much in the same uh, time, I guess the life cycle of the activities are somewhat similar. So I think that it's, it's just not mission impossible to put together some 
some event. One type of the event can be academic event focusing and targeting scholarly communities, but other kind of events can be involved uh, stakeholders as well. And, and why not? Why not join our forces to target stakeholders? They are not very easy to, to involve, so let's let's do it together. Maybe the more the more we are saying something, the, the more we will be heard. Um, Another way of, of cooperation when it comes to outreaching, and again, I think that this is a very easy way, so I encourage you to, to do it or invite you to do it, is that we try to concentrate our uh, efforts uh, in, in raising awareness of our beloved topics, political emotions, emotions in, in politics. Uh, I'm sure that there will be many interesting activities, many uh, worthwhile news to, to be published, all projects will have a social media channel, so let's share each other content. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm stating the obvious, but, but sometimes it's, it's good to have like a, at least a minimal uh, effort to, to collaborate. So let's share each other content, and the social media managers of the different projects may, may want to, to collaborate uh, each other and, and spreading each other's news. Um, the, uh, the next level would be like, and again, I think it's, it's also not that difficult when it comes to the, the policy recommendations, the policy outcomes of the project. Uh, again, we may want to put something together because I think that was mentioned in the Mores kickoff meeting of Paloma, I, I forget the, the family name of the, the Paloma Martin, okay. Project so officer. The project officer mentioned that it would be good <laughs> to have a, a collective policy recommendation. Because again, the, the more we are saying something, maybe the, the more chance we get uh, to, to be heard. So that's, that's also an option. Again, it requires a little bit of effort or more than just sharing each other post, but, um, but it might be useful. Uh, I would also like to um, be involved in, in joint publication efforts as well, because again, there are, there are overlapping scientific issues we are dealing with, and, and why not put together an edited volume or a special issue proposal, and we may want to invite each other, and, and that's, that's going to be a very nice um, added value for, for purposes. So maybe also we can write together, I mean, not all, but some of us write together conceptual papers as well about, uh, I don't know, the importance of emotional manifestation in politics. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, so it's a brainstorming from, from myself. And, and one of the, the most intriguing but very challenging task would be, and that would be, I guess, the, the maximum level of cooperation, is to somehow join our forces when it comes to data collection. Because we are collecting some, at, at some level, basically the similar data, so to speak. So, so let's be honest. Most of us will focus on the EP election, the forthcoming EP election. Uh, I myself, I will be included in the social media content analysis. So, um, so, so why not try to, to put together a joint forces and not to duplicate the works and, and share the, the data we collected. I know that it's not that simple as I'm now saying that, so it requires some, some efforts and, and work, but, but maybe afternoon we can talk about the details because the devils are in the details, we have different procedures, but that's, that's also an option. Uh, and also we can secondary use each other's uh, data, of course, after anonymization. I think that it's fair if you post some embargo for, for your data uh, before offering to, to other projects, but, uh, but that's, that's, that's also possible. We can do it in a bilateral way. Okay, and lastly, just a little bit about uh, one of the tasks which, uh, which focuses on the moral emotional messages uh, in the forthcoming European parliamentary uh, election campaigns. What we, I mean, the Center for Social Sciences is doing is we will scrape the social media content and also the metadata, very basic metadata, the, the name, the link, the, the emojis, the reaction, the emotional reaction, um, um, and stuff like that. Uh, so it's going to be like a, a file, basically, a CVS or an XLS, an Excel file. Uh, we will focus on parties and politicians. Uh, relevant for the for the EP election. I know that this is a little bit vague, but, but we can discuss the, the actual sampling later on. 
Uh, the MORES project uh, focuses on four countries when it comes to the EP election campaigns, France, Germany, Poland, and Hungary. We will mostly collect data from Facebook as well. And these are the tentative time frame. This is not set in stone, but I think that this, this is something very close to the final time frame of the project. So we will sample data 10 weeks before the election and two weeks after the election, because we would like to measure the emotional, the moral emotional reactions to the results of the election campaign. And I think that that would be so these are basically what we are going to do in a, in a kind of practical way. So if you think that there is something uh, that you may want to use or would like to learn more about that, let's, let's discuss it later. Okay, and these are just, just yeah. contact details, so feel free to, to reach me, or me in person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, feel free to reach Roy. Yeah. Or uh, ask. If you have any questions. Yes. Sorry, let me just add a few more ideas on, on this, on the black uh, uh, spot. So, Gabi uh, mentioned this, um, this social media, but we also are planning to, to make an intentional survey in several countries. It's, it's not easy, of course, because already our, our, our questionnaire, which hasn't been elaborated yet, of course, but I can see that it will be overloaded. <laughs> But still, we can think about maybe just have some common questions, you know, and have, have larger samples. That's already something. The policy we already just uh, stated that there might be some some joint interest. Uh, just the case studies about civic uh, uh, activism. So I think it's good. Of course, joint data collection also means that we have to a little bit uh, harmonize our research design, of course. So, but I think maybe it's not impossible to have. Not to, to duplicate work, but to, to make uh, it more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess it, uh, supplementary. supplementary to each other. Yeah, I think it, 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 uh, it would be it would be nice to just just some ideas. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Mm -hmm.